Hello everybody, um, welcome back to my channel. This is Java with Ali and I am Ali and I am so happy that I managed to get this working. <laughs> I've had several attempts to um, record videos and had some technical difficulties. Um, I have downloaded, um, I've created a new activity and I've just done a file new and activity. And if you go to the login activity, it brings up all of the inbuilt stuff that's here. It's really great to start out because we're going to start making an app now. There's no need to wait. We're just one sole developer and let's get to it. We already have our Java background, so we already know words like extends. We already know implements. We already know super. We already know override. And we have all this already there. If you're jumping in, to Android now, not having those key concepts, I will talk you through them as we go through these videos as well. So I have a couple of files open and I'm going to start going through this step by step. If you have Java Enterprise Edition um, background, then you'll know a little bit about Notate annotations and a little bit about connecting to the databases and stuff like that. And so in that case, it can be quite useful to have that background because you'll know here that there is a data folder. The data folder then has your model and it has your UI as well. So our UI is our user interface and it will show up our login activity here of where what we want it has all of our imported packages and we'll start with this one because this is the most important part so we have our imported packages again these are our set um, packages that are from the um integrated development environment is our android studio and we have our android um <laughs> Im imported um, packages that are available as well. So android.app.activity is the main one. It's in every activity. And we have our android.os.bundle as well. And then we also have different things called life cycles. And this is where um, there's callbacks and different parts of activities that stay around and not based on whether they're on create or on destroy. Um, but I will go through that in more detail as we're going along. So don't worry about it for now. We're just going to look at the main ones and get a brief overview and then we get deeper and deeper as we go. So we have um, Android X annotation nullable. So if you want something to be nullable, then you need this annotation. There's another string resolution if you want that as well or dot string dot OK, for instance, you can use that. Um, app compact activity that's the activity that is uh, using app compact that actually is coming from the inherited part of activity which comes from um, uh, yeah base activity and then all of the parent classes and super classes depending on your language your base language that you've learned you will probably hear terms like parent child or you will hear um, base and super classes as well, depending on your, your language that you've used. They are both similar terms, but people use uh, them interchangeably. So um, parent, child, or base, super can be used throughout these videos. So we have android.text here. So we have uh, text type view as well and widget. There are main things that we're using as part of our login activity.java. Now, as part of the login activity.java file, we're going to manipulate the way things go from our activity, which is actually made in our activity underscore login.xml file, which you can find out in your resources folder, which is over on the left hand side. And you can see here res. So project is open here and res. Our drawable is just our backgrounds. Our layout is the important part. Um, so there are kind of two main, really main sections of an app, a very basic app. You'll always have your XML files to show what's on screen. So your extensible markup language that shows the tags that are used, whether the layout is going to be wrapping content or 
um, the width of the screen or the height and all of the details of the dimensions of the pixels or dimensions in different ways. You can also use um, different um, scales for that as well. Then you also have um, our Java file itself and that kind of manipulates and associates the activity login, which we'll get into now as well. So we have our activity login here. We have three different layouts depending on the width of screens. We also have our values that are going to feed into our activity login. Best part about string values and dimensions and constants that are used throughout is if you use them and put them into a dimensions folder or a colors, uh, not folder, file, um, you'll be able to change it throughout the entire app with one file swoop, which is very, very, very useful. And if you're a sole developer, like I am, developing apps, and or if you work in a company like I also am, there's good practice when you're working with other people. So when you're developing and you're starting out with a new idea and you just want to start developing an app from scratch, you think, yeah, great, I'll just do this right here. And you might put in a lot of hacks and stuff, especially in a smaller team if you've got two or three people. Um, you have to make it scalable. <laughs> that is the number one part of any developer will tell you. Later on, you will save yourself so much pain if you make it scalable. So we have our login activity.java, which we mentioned, and we also have our activity underscore um, login.xml, which you can find over here in the resolution uh, resor resolutions resources folder and activity login is under um, it's separate. Usually it's under layout anyway that you put most um, of that. And then you have values. And when I open up values, you've got dimensions and strings are going to be a very important part of this activity. So we have, and um, keep this in mind, edit text, edit text, button, progress bar, okay? Here we have username, password, login, loading. Now, we're gonna go to login activity. Where are these declared? How are they brought into the Java part of the program? Here we go. Username, password, login, loading. <laughs> so you can see them directly in the code itself when you go through it. Um, we can also have a look just at another thing that I want to point out before we get into the code part. Um, here we have a uh, the different kind of color I'm using Arctic Fox um, Android Studio and this color shade here you can see is part of dimension so if I go to the dimensions um, file which I already have open <laughs> it shows here activity horizontal margin and when I go back here it shows that I'm using activity horizontal margin so you can see that there's 16 dp being used across here. I also have a hint here as part of string and a password that's been used as part of string as well and sign in or register. Now you can actually put in whatever string you want without going to the strings folder. You can also put in whatever dp you want without going and using the dimensions part. But the reason why we use the dimensions part and the reason why we use the um, strings part or the XML uh, files is so that we can just do one change and the whole app is changed. So it makes it really, really nice. You're doing it as a brief overview to everything. Um, and we're using it again, wrap content, which I just mentioned a few minutes ago. So let's get into the code. <laughs> we have two private um, instance variables called login view model and activity login binding. And they are referring to, and you can see here, it's um, highlighting up here, login view model. So if I go over here, it's login view model and activity login binding is also being used. 
So that is part of the data binding part. So um, that is also very important part. So if I open this, you can see that it opens activity login straight away. So we have override. So again, our keywords that we already know are using it. So public class, login activity, class starts with a capital letter. All Java class start, classes always start with a capital letter. Um, this one happens to be public. Keep in mind your three Ps. Again, public, private, protected for your instance variables. And um, we have here also for your classes, public class, login activity, extends app content compact activity which extends fragment activity which extends activity and then we use on create as part of that so we have our override so when you extend um similar to in eclipse as well when you extend a class you can go up to the code here and you can um say implement methods or override methods so here's our override methods that we can use and there's quite a lot you can see so this is coming from fragment activity these are all the methods that we can use this is coming from component activity and this is coming from activity so we can use all of these if we want to then we can go up to code again and implement methods and it's just using our on pointer capture cap, uh, changed, which we're not going to look at just yet. So we have our override methods public, void, on create. We're using bundle, saved instance bundle state, and we'll get into that in the next video. Super on create. So again, extends, override, super, our keywords in Java. So we're passing in our saved instance variable into the onCreate um, for this activity. So every activity has its own, um, every, every activity has its own, every, this is a base class for activities that wish to use newer platforms in the on older Android activities. It's their login activity, which is going to be what we're going to use. And then we have a couple of, so a couple of things to keep in mind for housekeeping. When you have a class that's used as an activity, you call it the da -da activity. Okay. <laughs> Similar to if we have an edit text or if we have um, a progress bar or if we have a login button, you can see here that the variables are actually called what they what type they are as well throughout their code. So we have binding.username, which is coming from here, do do do, password, do do do, and login, do do do, and loading, do do do. And th this is part progress bar, this is a button, this is edit text, and this is edit text. So when we go here, this should be edit text, edit text, button, progress bar. Straightforward with me so far. Again, we're using a keyword as part of Java called final as part of that as well. And they're kind of the main parts of starting your activity that you have your on create, you have your um, extending, extending of whatever activity that you're using. In this case, it's app compact activity. And you implement any of the activity, you create your variables based on that as well. Here we have our login view model, get login state. So we're calling a method from class.method. So we're calling a method from our login activity, which we initialized up here. So the way I like to describe it is DAU, declare, assign, use. <laughs> so we always declare our variables, assign them and use them. Um, in this case, we have our declaration is login activity. We have our new view model provider and we call it constructor. So this new view model factory, and then we get our model um, login view model dot class. We, we call our, we declare our nice variables from our activity. And then we use the method get login um, form state so if i click on the control 
and mouse click, it will bring me to the method that's being used, <laughs> which is really nice. But we're going to stick just with this for the moment. So this uses an override method on changed and it's going to be able to pass through a nullable. Um, login form state equals null. Login button dot set enabled. Get username error, get password error. And again, we're going to use our get login result. And here we have our text watcher before text change, on text change, after text change. <laughs> now, here's our important part that I want to get to because you could probably el el eliminate most of the code um, if you're just focusing on the variables that are being used within the activity at the moment. So we have here our four different variables that are in our activity login. Let's trace where they go. So we have our user edit text, that's going to be checked if there's an error. Now, if we want to find what is actually going to be passed through, we have an add text change listener in it as well. And we pass through our add text change listener here. And um, we also do the same with password edit text and we set on editor action listener. These are all inbuilt part of Android, they're really useful. They're part of the text view um, classes. So as you go along, you're, you'll become more and more familiar with what's available of how you can um, see what's changed and stuff. So if you're using something like at the moment, I'm using Angular in my job. So we have, there's in TypeScript, it's value changes. <laughs> um, if you see something that's changing a value or you can also just um, get the value with dot value for whatever text it is as well, similar to Android. Or if you came from years ago, I did um, Visual Basic. This also has a similar um, style to it where you check for, um, you have a listener to see if there's any changes. So uncheck changes or anything like that as well. Um, it's also in C Sharp. <laughs> if you're using pure C Sharp, um, for web kind of user interfaces and stuff like that. They also have a similar one, but that's an older version of C-Sharp because it's been a long time since I was using that. So um, here we have our set on click listener um, that's attached to our login button. And this is our override method. So if I was to write login button here, and the best part of using Android Studio is that you can just go set and it will come up with it. And you can just click on here and it will do all of it for you pretty much. It's very, very nice. <laughs> so these are the kind of things that you can go through it that isn't exactly correct. However, you can, you can take a look at the, um, at how it's done up here. So login set and then new view on click listener. And um, so it actually uses a new, um, it passes on a new anonymous view can be replaced with lambdas as well. So that's part of a new version of Java. So we will leave it here. I'm trying to keep the videos short until next week. Enjoy exploring part of creating a new activity maybe create a login activity or just create a basic activity and be able to change some of the um, variables, op create a new strings XML, create a new dimensions XML and adjust and adapt and move and change and grow and learn and develop. And now you're starting to do Android development. So um, stay safe out there. I hope you enjoy the videos as much as I do. And if you do, please do give a like, share and subscribe. And I'd really appreciate the support. And thank you so much for watching. Okay, bye.